In addition to a mountain of facts, science is a way of looking at and thinking about the world. Many children in the U.S. grow up believing that science is intimidating or beyond their capabilities. Introducing basic science concepts at any early age can help children develop their critical thinking skills. When the concepts are presented in an engaging way and connected to play and stories, children are likely to perceive science as something intriguing and exciting. Love, I'll find the world. What is that? Microphone. Are you going to sing to it? When schools think science, they may think risks because of chemicals, or they may think, oh, that costs money because you need the equipment. But science can be done with the smallest things you have in your house. All you have to do is want to go out there and look for those things. Children tell stories to make sense of the world. By collecting stories, adults can learn about children's thoughts about what is around them. Vivian Paley, an award-winning kindergarten teacher, is a pioneer in the field of thinking about children's stories. In her books, she describes how children show their understanding of concepts through their stories. Now Darian, he went to the Jungle. I've been collecting stories since about 2000, which is, was right when I finished producing three programs about the work of Vivian Paley. Paley is a kindergarten teacher who won a MacArthur Genius Grant because of the books she's written, almost a dozen, about the stories that young children tell. When we collect stories from children, what we're really doing is documenting their thinking. And what we want to do with that thinking is try to extend it. And the way that we do that through their stories is by asking lots and lots of questions. Okay. Put the telescope down. Put this on your head for a minute because we got to think. Yeah. All right, we have to put on our thinking hats. We have to put on our... <laughs> there we go. A group of students at a university in the Midwest decided to follow in Vivian Paley's footsteps and see what might happen if science and story collecting were combined. I feel the mixture of science and stories is a great hand-in-hand -hand combination. On one hand, you're learning about science, and at a young age, learning about science is so important. And on the other hand, you're learning about literacy and writing. She was scared of the water. Yeah. 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 The university students began going to a local licensed child care program to engage with the children in basic science activities and to collect their stories. They wanted to see if the stories would offer any insights into children's understanding of the science concepts that were presented to them. One of the interesting things about this project was many of the participants had very little or no exposure to young children. And by collecting stories, I felt as though they were able to, for the most part, bond with the children or communicate with the children in ways that are not as easy when you don't do stories. If, again, if you just go in to lecture and talk and it's one-way information from you to them, it's a different kind of relationship than the one that gets set up when you're actually sitting there and paying attention to a child and writing down his or her words. As the university students interacted with the children, they slowly began to learn how to effectively collect stories. Edge? Your name Edge? All right. There are different questions for each child. Some children, you could say, um, what did you do today? And they'll give you an elaborate story because they're just conversational like that. Some children aren't so conversational and you have to pull teeth. So can you tell me a story about something with water in it? Can you swim? Can you swim? Think of anything else that flies? Do you get in the pool? What flies? You do? What, what do you do when you get in the pool? Do you splash around in the water? Do you sink no. to the bottom? No! No, what do you do? Anything else? You splash. Do you know how to swim? I splash. James, do you know how to swim? Uh, uh, one story that I collected from Josie was uh, pretty interesting. She starts off, she's just kind of 
drawing with the yellow marker, and I was saying, well, what, what do you have going on there? That must be Sissy Kiss Me Cereal. So what is this? A cereal. A stereo? A cereal. Yep. Cereal? Yep. Okay. So is it breakfast time? Yep. Is your dad still asleep on the couch? I felt like the more questions I asked, she just kept adding all these things. She brought her sister into it. She had, at one point, I think seven TVs in the house. So I really liked the way the story was going, and by asking all these questions, I was able to get more and more, and she filled up that whole entire sheet of paper. And I was told that she's usually a quiet person, and I didn't really see that at all from her. We got this huge story, and I thought that was pretty cool. The university students' biggest challenge was breaking down the expectations they already had about science. Gradually, they began to realize that science is everywhere, not just in textbooks. With the new awareness, they were able to find simple science activities that were both fun and educational for children. When they were planning their science activities, they also made use of the information in the Foundations to the Indiana Academic Standard for Young Children, ages 3 to 5. The foundations are the early learning guidelines that describe what young children should know and be able to do at different stages of development. What we think of as science and what children think of as science are often two very different things. As adults, we think of science being those formulas that we learned in elementary school, high school, or maybe even college. For children, science is a very different thing. Children will begin to mix dirt and water and get mud and that's the very beginnings of their science understandings. For example, when we saw the children digging in the dirt and finding worms, that was a new realization for them, and they were very excited by that realization. For them, that's science. They may not think of it that way, but that's very much the science experience for them. Once they have that experience, we can begin to talk with children about the worms and the dirt and all the things that they discovered and deepen their understanding of those science concepts along the way. That's a grandpa worm. When choosing science activities, we try to choose things that students would see outside and that they've seen their whole lives. So we would choose things like snow, ice, and water so that the students could explore these natural objects and with a different lens for the science. I don't know this cup. Oh, you okay? I don't know if the green, that green container or this blue container is bigger. Should we see which one's bigger? Or to we'll hold more water? How about the green? Not as much. That one holds the most. Show me. A lot of times when they got done, when their turn was over, they wouldn't even get up from their seat, or they would get up from their seat and then just hang around the science table and not move. And we would have to be like, you need to go do a different activity. You, we need to let someone else have a turn. But they really, really enjoyed the science activities. Through hands-on activities, questions, and the children's drawings, the university students were able to see how the children found connections between science concepts and their stories. The Mari fell on the snow. And what happens when you fall on the snow? His pants got wet. His pants got wet. I think you just did some science. You know you just did science? What I wanted to see is whether or not the science activities that we presented would make their way into their stories and what we could do then to help, help that process along. Children, young children are still very much involved in a fantasy world. They pretend, they have very active imaginations and we don't want them to stop doing that, but we do want them to start learning what facts are. Where is he starting to? The Start the car? Yeah. Where's he going in the car? They're going to Chuck E. Cheese. The monster's going to Chuck E. Cheese. The monster's going to Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah. Are you going to Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah. 
I thought the monster had to stay outside. And trying to do that, trying to help them understand the difference between fact and fantasy, between real and pretend, it takes a long time and it is a process that does not happen overnight. And so with Stories of Science, we were trying to continue uh, nurturing their creativity, but at the same time start bringing them in some facts about the scientific world. The science concepts that the university students selected were sinking and floating. Is this straw floating? Snow melting to water. Why do you think it's melting? Spatial recognition utilizing pockets. And what do you do with the pocket? And conservation of space with containers of water. They were able to expose the children to science in a simple and inexpensive way. These activities can be done in any early childhood program or by parents in the home. By talking about the stories and thinking about them and really kind of looking at them every week, we kept going and actually made a lot of headway. And I think that the same would be true with any group of adults that tries to sit down and apply story collecting and combine it with science activities and with young children. When children see that those things that they enjoy doing, like holding that worm in their hands or making that mud out of the dirt and water, that builds those positive feelings about science. And then when they get to elementary school or high school and have those science experiences, they'll remember that positive feeling from when they were younger. And that's what we want to have happen for children. We want to develop in those early years those positive feelings about science and exploration and asking questions so that when they get to those science classes as elementary students or high school students, that they carry those positive feelings with them and that will stay with them for the rest of their life. Oh, I'm gonna play.